From anatomy to anesthesiology, from pathology to pharmacology, from microbiology to medicine, a one-man resource to the world of health sciences. Welcome to Dr. Paul's Medical Lectures. A practicing physician, Dr. Paul offers you essential insights on diseases afflicting millions of people around the world. For today's lecture, here is Dr. Paul. Thank you very much for tuning to our channel today. Today I want to talk a few minutes about uh, malignant melanoma, a very important uh, disorder because there are so many people suffering from this problem. So I want to spend a few minutes discussing this major skin disease. Malignant melanoma, it could be a flat lesion or an elevated lesion. And whenever you examine any skin lesion that is suspicious, you should always think about malignant melanoma. Usually, if you look at the border, they will have this irregular border. So anything you see in, with an irregular border, think about malignant melanoma. And one in four cases of melanoma occurs before the age of 40 years. And the survival rate has increased. You see, it used to be 60% back in 1960s. Now it increased to 85%. That is the survival rate because early detection matters. You see, the most important prognostic factor is tumor thickness. Tumor thickness decides. If the tumor is thin, it has a better survival rate. If the tumor is thick, it has lower survival rate. That's why tumor thickness is the most important prognostic factor. If the tumor is less than one millimeter, it is like 95%. If it is like more than four millimeters, it has like 30% survival rate. And whenever it is, uh, a, if there is a distant metastasis, that survival rate falls to less than 10%. So you see the tumor thickness uh, decides how the patient is going to survive this. Malignant melanoma, it is uh, classified into many clinical histologic types, including lentigo malignant melanoma, which arises on uh, chronically sun-exposed skin areas in older individuals, and superficial spreading malignant melanoma, and two-thirds of all malignant melanomas arises on intermittently sun-exposed areas. Then there is nodular malignant melanoma. Then there is acral lentiginous melanoma, which arises on palms, soles, and the nail beds. And malignant melanomas also happen on mucous membranes. So the clinical features will be, remember this, the mnemonic is easy, A, B, C, D, E. So A stands for asymmetry. B stands for border irregularity. Then C stands for color variegation. Then D stands for diameter more than 6 millimeters. Then E stands for evolution. So whenever there is an asymmetric lesion with a border that is irregular, changing in color, with a diameter greater than 6 mm, and it is evolving rapidly, then that is malignant melanoma until proven otherwise. So that is a very useful mnemonic I encourage you to remember when you study about malignant melanoma. So, folks, you see, it's a very important disorder and you should have a high suspicion of index when you see this. And whenever you see bleeding and ulceration, those are ominous signs. And when a patient comes with uh, many, many moles and if one of that stands out, think about malignant melanoma. We, we say, we call it ugly duckling sign. So, a patient with large number of moles is uh, at increased risk for melanoma than somebody who has less number of moles. So when you see these patients and when you see an atypical lesion, and uh, we should always do something about it. Use dermoscopy, that is uh, the use of a special magnifying device. And it costs like $800, I heard, when I was doing a rotation with a dermatologist. So this glass thing, this magnifying device, you use it to see the skin lesions and if it is suspicious, you take a biopsy and uh, 
the BAFC then it has a specificity like 85% and sensitivity like 95%. So it's a very, very useful map. Now, how can you treat malignant melanoma? Cancer. This is a cancer. The treatment is accession. Remove it. And you, so, so you take a biopsy and if it is a, a, a skin malignant melanoma, then you take a large border around it. Sometimes you have to remove the lymph nodes, sentinel lymph nodes, that is selective lymphadenectomy. So you remove the lymph nodes in the surrounding area and many times the lymphangiography, that is uh, uh, to view the lymph nodes and if you, suspe if you suspect the malignant melanoma has actually metastasized to these lymph nodes, it's always important to remove it. So the most important points are not to be struggling with uh, different types of uh, malignant melanoma, which is not that important. The most important thing is remembering the prognostic factors, remembering how to identify these skin lesions. So, as I said, malignant melanoma, folks, is uh, the tumor thickness is the most important prognostic factor. And you should always try to identify it as earlier detection. See, earlier detection is the key to save lives. And as I said, A, B, C, D, E, asymmetry, border irregularity, color variegation, diameter, and evol evolution of the lesion. A, B, C, D, E, remember that. And that makes up the malignant melanoma. Hope you got something about it. And uh, if you have any important points, please feel free to post them on our website and our comment section. Thank you very much. Thanks for listening. For more medical videos, please visit us at www.drpaul.org and take time to browse through hundreds of health videos we regularly post on our site. If you are preparing for USMLE, PLAB, and other medical exams, make sure you visit our website to browse through our videos explaining the essential points you need to know before taking these examinations. For more information, visit us at www.drpaul.org. Thank you, and may God richly bless you. You. Are you preparing for USMLE? Please do not waste thousands of dollars on training courses. Get the books written by Dr. Paul with the student-to-student -student tips and memory aids. The success will be yours, and you will soon realize your dream of becoming a physician in the United States. If you are preparing for Step 2 Clinical Skills, study USMLE Smasher, a guide helping thousands of medical students to pass this examination. For more information, visit us at www.drpaul.org.